Looks like John's come out of hiding. Oh God, where did you get this? We understand it has a lot of sentimental value for you. It does. It may seem silly to you, but it means a lot to me. Thanks. This finger puppet, this dumb, ugly little finger puppet, is proof I killed my sister. She gave it to me just before the accident. And then afterwards, you know, I, I'd put it on her finger and she'd make me laugh. It disappeared a week ago, right after I made Mary promise me she'd keep living. For me. Because I could tell, in her eyes, she wanted to give up. She was tired. I couldn't let her go. When I thought I'd lost this puppet, it suddenly occurred to me that instead of convincing Mary to stay with me, I'd actually pushed her into leaving. I killed her. Someone else may have helped, you know, carry it out, but it's really my fault. John, I don't understand something, and I don't mean to be insensitive, but how would you know what Mary was thinking? She couldn't speak. She could hardly move. How are you communicating with her? We both knew Morse code. We tap into each other's palms. It's almost like how Helen Keller used to communicate. Mary knew Morse code. Yeah. You know, for laughs, she'd tap out the things that bothered her on the regulator button because she knew it would cut off after a certain point. She complained about blisters and cramps. Jane. Jane? Yeah. Mary told me every Sunday at some point she'd get so bored when Jane came over that she'd spell her name out with the regulator button. It's, it's like the finger puppet. Stupid, but funny. I really miss her. We need to get back to the lab and review those regulator records. I think we may have overlooked our best witness. Look, officers, this is a really terrible time for me right now. I'm sorry for lashing out at you. I realize you're just doing your job. I lied to you about one thing. If someone did this to Mary, I want to know who. I'll help you. In any way I can, ask me whatever questions you need. I could talk about Mary all day if you wanted me to. That Pauline wasn't actually a registered nurse? Yeah, Mary knew. She didn't have a problem with it. She liked Pauline a lot. She also knew how I felt about her. I think Mary probably thought I could do better than an ex-stripper, but she was happy that I was happy. Everyone knew we were a couple, including Jane. I love Pauline. And I know she would never do anything to hurt Mary. And even if Mary had wanted Pauline to help end her life, I mean, even if Pauline had found some way to communicate with Mary about that, she would have come to me first. Whatever you think you have on Pauline, I'm telling you, you're wrong. Pauline doesn't know Morse code. How could Mary have asked her? I know you probably think I'm blinded by love or something, but Pauline couldn't have been the one who ended Mary's life. Pauline and I were home all night. We got back around 10, and then we basically crashed in our room till morning. It's not really much of an alibi, right? Nobody saw us, nobody called us, but it's the truth. I understand you have to ask me that question, but it still hurts. And the answer is still, no, I did not kill Mary. You see, John, the problem is, absent you having an alibi we can confirm, the evidence we have right now suggests that you had both opportunity and motive in your sister's death. What evidence? Well, for one thing, we found a shoe impression beside your sister's bed. It was left in fresh mud. We were able to match that impression to the shoes we found in your bedroom, the ones which still had caked mud on them. Wait a minute. Think about it. If I was really going to kill Mary, why the hell would I track mud all over the house and leave my shoe print where you guys can find it and match it right back to me? You ever hear the expression consciousness of guilt? It means deep down, you might have subconsciously felt guilty for doing what you did. I didn't do what you think I did. The thing is, I have another pair of shoes just like those. I keep them on the boat. S somebody else could have used them. 
Somebody who wanted to make it look like I did it. Now, the weird thing is, I keep those shoes in a locked cabinet. But here's the key. Go check it out. Jane. My sister and I don't exactly get along anymore, but between the two of us, I'm the one capable of murder, not her. Jane and I aren't very close. When we were growing up, she was cruel and distant, and she was really judgmental, and she was always the victim. But I did appreciate how she tried to be with Mary after the accident. I can't see Jane doing anything to harm Mary. At worst, she would have just stopped showing up. Jane didn't like Mary. She didn't trust her. But then, after the accident, Jane tried really hard to make things right between them. size and brand of shoe with mud on them right where John told us they'd be okay now the trick is to distinguish one pair of muddy shoes from the other So here's what's bugging me. Every time Jane comes to visit, Mary all of a sudden has this wildly unpredictable pattern of morphine dosing. And I just couldn't put my finger on what was gnawing at me. You know, what could Mary possibly be thinking? And then it hit me. If you were to take Mary's erratic pattern and filter it through the computer as a Morse code pattern, did you see Mary's final message right before she died? J-A-Y-N. You know, Morse code has been in use for over 160 years. It only ceased to be an international standard for maritime communication in 1999. And for some reason, I remember when the French Navy ceased using Morse code in 97. The final message transmitted was, Calling all. This is our last cry for our eternal silence. <laughs> Let's go talk to Brass. What evidence do you have? I mean, this isn't exactly a smoking gun. Jane Barrett may have had opportunity, but as far as we can tell, she hasn't got a motive. Now our little John and Nurse Lou, they have motive. I'll see what I can do, but now that John's more willing to cooperate, why don't we talk to him and see if he lets something slip?
tissue impressions we collected at the crime scene match the treads of the shoes we recovered from the boat. These are the shoes the killer wore. The shoe impressions we collected at the crime scene match the treads of the shoes we recovered from the boat. These are the shoes the killer wore. Catch. That's a very fine strand of hair. Appearances can be so deceiving, can't they? That's Jane Barrett's hair. You know what? That crime scene was staged. We need to talk to Brass. I don't understand. Why am I being brought in like this? I told you before, I was at home in Los Angeles. Miss Barrett, we found your DNA at a location which ties you to Mary's murder. That's not possible. I gave you my home security system records. I wasn't even in Las Vegas. I was home. This has to be some kind of mistake. Didn't you check with the security company? That's exactly what we did, Miss Barrett. You, and everyone we talked to, mentioned how you would always pay Mary a visit every Sunday. But when we reviewed your home security records, we noticed one Sunday when your system listed you as home all day. I... I have an explanation. I... I... that is, um... May we see your phone, Miss Barrett? I'm gonna get a search warrant for your home in Los Angeles, Miss Barrett. 
I'm going to have LAPD turn over the place and tell me exactly what they find. May I save you the trouble, Captain? You won't find anything there. You have no case. Just because I wasn't home doesn't mean I murdered my stepsister. That's actually quite a remarkable leap of imagination. And I would guess those don't usually play very well in front of a jury. I just heard back from the LAPD. They searched Jane Barrett's Lost Hills residence from top to bottom. Found nothing. Look, maybe Jane didn't want to risk traveling around with incriminating evidence on her, so she stashed it around here somewhere. All I'm saying is, it's worth looking into. Smudge wasn't on her phone earlier. It's not sticky, it's viscous, like oil. Petroleum oil with a very low ash content. Looks like the type of two-stroke oil you'd use in jet skis. The chemical impurities in both oil samples match, which means we can put Jane at the lake very recently, but why would she go down there? Unless maybe she was trying to hide something from us. I think we're going to need something to search below ground as well as above. Ah, yes. The ultrasound device. It's impressive. But it's also expensive. Let's just be sure we really need it before we start wasting valuable resources. This evidence places Jane Barrett in proximity to that pool of motor oil. Okay. I'll get you that ultrasound device. Let's see if we can find out why she was there. So this is what Jane was trying to hide. A hammer. She buried the hammer right on top of a wrench, which looks as though it's been down there for a while. like some kind of softer metal got embedded in the pitting on the hammerhead. These particles are bronze, 
and they're a perfect match to the bronze that the bust is made out of. The bronze particles didn't come off by smashing the regulator. Someone deliberately shaved them off and planted them. So our killer wanted us to make the connection to the bust and wanted to make sure we found those muddy footprints right by it. And he or she assumed that if we did, our focus would turn to John and Pauline. Jane Barrett's fingerprint is on the hammer used to smash the regulator. I'd really like to hear what Jane Barrett has to say. You didn't find anything, did you? I tried to save you the trouble. So is that it, officers? You'll never really know, will you?
Here's your fingerprint. We found it on the hammer you buried by the lake. The same hammer you used to knock off a piece of that bust. The one you planted with the broken regulator. I'm just curious, Jane. Why the bust of Mary's father? Did you resent the Marst family that much? I hated them. Hated them for stealing my family from me. You know, when my parents died in that oh-so-tragic skiing accident, it made me start believing that there was the possibility of justice in this world. Like God had answered my prayers and punished them for abandoning me. But then Mary took over the company. She was just a stupid little party girl, and there was nothing I could do about it. But as soon as Mary resigned, that very night, I was ready. God really does help those who help themselves. Mary survived her accident, which upset me. Why was God punishing me? But I planned to try again, and that's when I bought that application for my phone so I would be able to create an alibi. But you know, I realized I could just watch Mary die, bit by bit. It was then that I completely understood God's plan for me. I wasn't being punished. I was being rewarded. And then one day, I found John standing over Mary, crying. Crying and begging her not to die because she was the only family he had left. But I'm his real sister. That very day, I snuck into John's room to find something that would lead you to him and his naughty nurse. I took a chip of her fingernail from the trash in his room. Then yesterday, I used my phone to make it look like I was home. Then I drove to Vegas. It only takes about four hours. In the right car, that is. I went down to the family boat, put on my gloves, got John's muddy shoes, and drove to the chalet. I waited for my brother and his whore to go to his room, and then I snuck in. I put on the shoes and took the bronze bust from the front room. As soon as she saw me, Mary started panicking, pushing her regulator button over and over and over. Do you need some help with that, Mary? I cracked open Mary's regulator with the bust, then used the hammer to chip off a bit of it. That part was for you guys to find. Then, oh, and this was the best part. I put the broken regulator in Mary's hands and I forced her to push the button. I looked into her terrified eyes to watch the morphine melt her soul away. And then, she almost wrecked it. She looked at me and she smiled at me. She was trying to trick me, make me think she was glad to die. Like this was what she'd wanted all along, as if God was freeing her, not me. After she was dead, I planted that tiny bit of the fake fingernail on her hand. I replaced the bust, returned the shoes to the boat, and buried the hammer. Then I drove home. I got back just in time to catch my flight. You might be right, Jane. Mary may have been happy to finally be released of her burden. Or maybe she was smiling because she'd been able to spell out most of your name on her regulator right before she passed. I think she was smiling because she knew you weren't going to get away with murder. Well, we'll never know for sure, now will we? I do know one thing for sure, Miss Barrett. You may have been neglected by your family, but we're going to be paying a lot of attention to you now, probably for the next 25 years to life. Very good work, you two. The confession is always a nice bonus in a case like this one. Technically, two confessions. One for last night's murder, and another for last year's attempted murder. You keeping score, Nicky? I just think my partner here deserves full credit for chalking up two scores. And I think it should go a long way towards breaking up that cloud hanging over the team because of Huntby. You let me worry about Huntby. I'm telling you, Catherine, he's dirty. Good night, Nicky.